Hello, I'm John Paul and I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to look at the water leak on this Range Rover P38. We've identified the water leak as being the part where the water pump bolts onto the oil pump cover and it's the bit between the oil pump cover and the engine block that is leaking. So that's what we're going to change. You don't necessarily need to remove the radiators to, to, uh, to, to do this job, but we are going to remove the radiator so that you can get a bit of a, a better access with the uh, camera so you can see exactly what we're doing. So that's what we're going to do first, remove the radiator. Nice and simple to drain the water out the P38. You've got a drain plug right at the bottom of the radiator. So 21mm spanner. We've already taken the rad cap off just so the water flows a little bit easier. Just get the container. Straight down, brilliant. Just going to remove the bottom hose first, so it's a spring clip type of hose clip on this. Clamp it together, move it up the hose. You might just need a little screwdriver just to free that hose off a little bit, but then we'll do that and then take the bottom hose off. There are two M8 bolts, one each side of the radiator, so we go through the, the metal brackets at the side into the radiator. They just both need removing while we're under here so that we can lift the radiator out from the top. Now we're just going to remove the little bypass hose on the top of the radiator and also the top hose as well. This is these spring clips. It's a bit tight on the top hose there. And once they're out of the way, we can then remove the cowling. We're now going to remove the viscous fan. So rem remove the top cowl, just two little metal spring clips one each side, them out of the way, lift the cowl out of the way, then we can see the fan. Got the uh, viscous fan spanner down onto the nut. Now just remember that this is a uh, left hand thread, but you are undoing the nut on the bolt, so you do still have to do it left hand side. So just get the spanner, good old hit with the hammer. And we can spin the fan off. There we go. That's the fan out of the way. We're now going to lift the radiator out. Those two M8 bolts that we take, took off at the bottom of the uh, radiator when we was underneath, they are the locating bolts. So after we've got the hoses off, there are a couple of oil cooler hoses that are on the cowling. So just as you lift the radiator up, just make sure that they are clear of the bracket. And then that's the radiator out. I'm going to remove the drive belt now. As you can see, this is a turpentine belt, so it does go in a fairly complicated manner. So if you haven't got a picture of it in the book, I'd just advise you to take a photograph so you can refer to it later on. I'm just going to take off the, uh, or slacken off the three bolts for the, for the water pump pulley, just because it's easier with the belt on. You can just have a bit of resistance, so we can just crack them off like that. So at least they're all, all three of those are slackened off. And then just get a socket or a spanner, onto the tensioner, take the belt off, let the spring loaded tensioner go back to its stop and then you can remove the belt. I've removed two of the bolts on the pulley that we slackened off earlier and I'm just going to do the last one and then we can take that pulley off. And then we can see the water pump so we're going to have to take the bottom hose off and then it's the ring of bolts around the outside of the water pump which I'll show you how to take off in a moment. I've removed the bolts on the outside of the water pump. Now there are most of them are 10mm spanner size bar three and them three ones go through the water pump and then through the timing cover into the block itself so they're longer ones so just remember when you're putting them back they will need to go in that same place and then just remove this last bolt and then we can take the water pump off. Because the front cover that we are taking off to re repair the water leak houses the oil pump, we need to take off the sump so that we can unbolt the oil pickup pipe from underneath there. So we need to drain the oil, so use a suitable receptacle out with the oil, and then we're going to remove the sump. Fairly simple, it's just a ring of bolts around the outside, two through the bell housing, and then we can take the sump off. I've taken all the bolts off from around the bottom of the sump, fairly self-explanatory. The only two you've got to watch out for, right at the back of the sump, up these two little holes there, there are two bolts up there, so make sure you take those off before 
you're trying to take the sump off and then once the sump is out it is just a, a fiddly thing you just have to lift it up at the front make sure you pull the gasket off the studs at the front and you just have to i'm not going to be able to show you because i'm going to get in front of the camera but you just have to feed the sump round a little bit lift the front up and then the sump will come out the back this is the oil pickup part that we need to remove. It's fairly simple. There's an M8 nut there, which is a 13 mil spanner size, and two 8 mil spanner size bolts at the front where it's on the bottom of the oil pump. So just take them out, that bolt, them two bolts, that nut, and then we can take the pipe off. Fairly simple. Just going to take off the oil cooler pipe while we're down here, and then from underneath, we're just about done. So 22 mil spanner, undo the pipe, and there will be a little bit of oil that comes out, so make sure you've got something to catch it in there we go right that is the down here pretty much it we need to be up the top now just a couple more things to take off now the 24 mil spanner for the bottom pulley so i, mean, I use the windy gun for it but you can use the uh, user spanner um if, you, if you've got the crank uh, shaft locking tool you can take off the front crankshaft sensor wire there's the oil pressure plug at the back there and then just above the oil filter is the other oil cooler pipe 22 mil spanner undo that and then that's everything off bar the bolts that actually hold the cover on which we'll do in a moment I'm just going to remove this idler pulley now just so it gives us enough room to bring the oil filter housing forward there's just one bolt straight down the center 37 miles long so now that's out of the way we've removed the bolts from the cover so now it's just a case of prising it forward taking it off the end of the crank and here is the cover and that bit there is where our water was leaking and you can see the gasket has definitely failed around there before we go on to refitting the front cover, we're just going to replace the crankshaft oil seal. It's just a case of putting your screwdriver underneath the lip, just levering it out and get the new seal and then just gently tap it into place. It, it can be a little bit awkward to, to get in, but just do it nice and gently and keep working it round until it's back completely flush with the front of the cover. I've cleaned up the surfaces, both on the block where the gas is going to sit and on the uh, front timer cover as well so then we're just going to put just a thin thin smidgen of uh, gasket goo around both sides more than anything just to make sure the gasket sticks in place when we're going to reassemble it so i'm just going to put some gasket goo on there put the gasket onto the block and then we're going to replace the front cover that's the gasket back in place we can then replace the front cover what you will see is the three little holes on the oil pump and there's a woodruff key on the crankshaft so you do have to make sure that when you're putting that over the crank that one of the grooves lines up with the woodruff key and uh, you might just have to you know just put your fingers in there and just turn it around just going to replace the water pump now we're going to put a thin film of gasket goo around the surface gasket on and then we'll refit it nice and simple I'm now going to replace the plug on the back of the oil pressure switch and also the cam sensor wire, make sure that gets plugged in, otherwise the vehicle won't start. And once that's back in, we are going to replace the oil cooler pipe. Now once we've taken our oil cooler pipe off, we were just checking it and the, the, um, the flexible part of it had got quite perished, so we've decided to change it. But whilst we were taking that off, um, the other end that goes to the oil cooler the, the metal union to the aluminium oil cooler had corroded on and it wouldn't come off. So we are going to fit two new pipes and the new oil cooler. I've replaced the two oil pipes, one each side of the, to the oil cooler from the oil pump housing. Now these little O-rings here, just make sure that you've got them all on place on the end of the pipes before you fit them to the oil cooler. Here is the oil cooler, it's fairly simple to fit, it's just one M8 bolt at each end, the bolt to the radiator bracket, so it just sits down there like that. And the problem is, it's an aluminium oil cooler and steel nuts on the pipes, and just the reaction between the steel and al aluminium over the years, they just become you know, just like one really, they weld themselves together, so it's very difficult to undo them. So if they're seized up, unfortunately, you're nearly nine times out of 10, you're gonna have to fit new pipes and an oil cooler. That's a few things to replace down the front of the engine, so you've got the crank pulley. If you just start it on the crank, you will just have to turn it around a little bit so it finds the Woodruff key, and then 
front pulley bolt on. Now that one's tightened up to 270 newton meters. So if you've got a, a way of holding the crank so you can tighten it up, otherwise you are just gonna have to bang it on with a windy gun. Then there's the bottom hose onto the water pump. Put that there and then replace your clip. And then there's the pulley on the water pump for the fan belt, just them three bolts. We're now going to refit the serpent time belt. We've got a new belt here. Uh, as we said earlier, if you're unsure and you haven't got a picture, it's probably a good idea to take a photograph of it. I mean, the belt really will only go on one way, but it is quite a, a daunting thing when you see the size of the belt and all these pulleys to try and think you're going to get it right first time. You're probably not. So once it's all nearly in place, let's get our 15 mil socket on the tensioner nut, wind it up, replace it, make sure they're all in the ridges properly, and then we're done. Now we've got the belt on, it's just a good idea to tighten up the water pulley bolts. They don't have to be too tight, they're only M8 bolts, so that 25 newton meters is absolutely fine. And then once they're all nicely tight, I'm going to replace the radiator. I'm going to refit the radiator now. It's quite a nice simple job on the Range Rover. You've got these two little pins at the bottom of the radiator and if you look down the, the uh, slot where it goes down to there's obviously two little rubber uh, grommets down there and they just slide into those and then there's the two locking pin bolts, one each side that we took off underneath which is nice and easy. So just a case of sliding it down and locating it in the two bottom lugs and the top two little sliders. Now I'm going to replace the fan and viscous coupling. So slide it down the front, line it up, and start it on the threads and spin it all the way on. It should spin on fairly well by hand up until the last little bit. And then get our spanner onto the nut. And then we're probably just going to have to just tap it with the hammer again like we did before to take it off, but obviously the opposite way. I'm going to refit the top hose. So, obviously, fairly simple. Put those two back on there. Tighten the, the spring clip on this end. And it's Jubilee clip on the other end. Tighten those up, and that's it. I'm just going to replace the top bleed pipe onto the top of the radiator now and then the same spring clip, just clamp it together and uh, replace it on. And we're just going to replace the slam panel, we took that off so we could change the oil cooler earlier. So it's just four M8 bolts, two at each side, and then the, the front grill just clipped in at the bottom and then four Phillips screws at the top. And that's done. We need to clean the block where the sump gasket is going to sit, so get a scraper, just get all the little bits of corrosion. It's a rubber gasket on this one, so there's not, there shouldn't be too much gasket left on there really. But just to make sure you clean up all the corroded bits, make sure it's all nice and nice and clean before we refit the gasket and the sump. So just get a bit of emery cloth, and just go along, just to make sure it's all nice and clean and tidy, there's no debris, and then we'll fit the oil pickup pipe. I'm going to replace the oil pickup pipe. There's a few things you need to check first. There's a little wire gauze inside there on the pickup. Make sure that's got no debris in it and it's all dead clean. At the other end, where it fits into the front of the block, there's a new O-ring, so you need to remove the old O-ring and then replace with a new one. And then bolt it up into place. Fairly simple, there's two bolts at the front, either side of that little flange there. There's a spacer that goes on top of the oil pickup bracket and there's a stud on the bottom of one of the main bearing caps and then there's a nut that goes on the bottom of it. So fairly simple, but you just have to bear in mind those couple of little things. I'm just going to replace the sump gasket now. I am just going to put a thin film of gasket goo just around, never hurts. And then on the sump gasket you'll see the little pins, rubber pins on the bottom, and they just go in those locating lugs there. So you know that the gasket is definitely all in the right place. 
So thin film of oil, of gasket gear on it first, then fit the gasket, and then we'll fit the sump back onto the engine. The air suspension has gone down on this vehicle while we've been working on it, so the, uh, the distance between the, the axle and the chassis had obviously decreased, so we've put a jack under it, just jacked the body up a little bit to give the clearance to replace the sump, otherwise it was going to be quite a difficult job. It's just a case of put it there, make sure you get the oil feed pipe through the plate on the sump, back up into place, and then just have a couple of bolts ready just to start them so you can get it into place. That's the sump back on, all done, all tightened up. I'm just going to replace the two AMA bolts in the bottom of the radiator, the mounting um, brackets that we took off earlier. Uh, I will then replace the bottom hose, it's dead simple, place it on the radiator, the spring clip, just to um, tighten that up. And then I'm going to replace the oil filter. I'm going to fill the oil filter with oil, just because we've had the oil bump off, and just to help it self-prime, I'm going to fill it up with oil before I fit it. So that's what we're going to do now. The last thing to fit is a cowling that goes on the top of the fan. So once that's just in place, one clip each side, then we're going to top it up with oil, top it up with antifreeze mix, and then we're going to start us up, get the cooling system working properly. So that's the job pretty much complete. I've put 5.8 litres of oil in it. Um, the cooling system holds 11.3 litres, so I've put 6 litres of antifreeze in. I'll top the rest up with water. And then it's a case to start the engine up, turn the heater on to maximum, turn the fan on to 2, just so you can keep, make sure the heater's going to get warm and just keep an eye on the water, keep topping it up until it all settles level, temperature gauge reads normal, the heater's on uh, and everything's working properly. And as soon as that's done, pop the rad cap on, go back out to work.